hello guys how are you both today yeah i'm good not too bad shenanigans Shenanigans. i was i was thinking the same thing (laughs) my voice got really high when i was doing that i don't know why but you also take a nap no i don't take naps it just ruins my sleep schedule Mm -hmm. yeah i can't do it yeah i'm I'm probably gonna be up for a while yeah, you watch two movies tonight, go to bed at four, like, all right, nothing's, nothing's wrong yeah. here. I remember when I couldn't sleep one time and we had a lab. And then uh, it was like after our lab. And then you sent me some anime movie or something. Forgot. And then what? it was, yeah, it was like an hour, under a little under two hours. Okay. And then I'm like, I don't know, I'll see. And then you're like, so what movie did, this, did you decide on? I'm like, oh, I'm watching The Godfather Part 2. That sounds sort of familiar. I just wonder what anime movie I sent you. Excuse the motorcycles of the highway that you can hear. They're the joys of living in Pickering. Was it Acura because of the motorcycle? No. It was a Honda. Vroom, vroom. Vroom, vroom. No. Woo! Vroom, vroom. Speaking of vroom, vroom, let's get the show into high gear, gentlemen. What a transition. Uh, yes. <laughs> the look on Alex's face there. <laughs> How do we let this guy steer the ship? That was cringy. That was cringy. But that's okay. We try. We try, though. Um, All right, guys. Preseason is unfortunately still happening. Uh, The Leafs do play tonight against the Sens? Yeah, yeah, they do. At 7 o'clock. I think it's just a rotation, right? Like Montreal, Toronto, and and, uh, and Ottawa just play each other? Because I think Montreal only have, of their six games, it's split between Ottawa and Toronto. I don't know why it's like that, but yeah, it's literally, uh, it's that. We get like Canadian division was one thing, but like I was, I'm, I'm sick of it. This is, you gotta think about it. So the seven game series, the 10 regular season games, and these, the Habs and the Leafs would have played each other 20 times over like the past year. That yeah. is too much. And, and like I assume they made it like this because of travel. And I'm assuming you guys listened to the, I think it was the last night's SDP where Dangle said apparently Montreal arrived in Toronto at 3.30 in the afternoon. So you did this because of travel and then still did that. It explains their performance that night. It does. It does. Sluggish. Luckily, game two was like good. But uh, before we we get there, though, Alex, you were sidelined. You were day to day. You're doing much yes, better was. now. I, I wonder if you wanted to share some of your thoughts from that first preseason game before we move on to the second one and preview Ottawa, uh, Toronto tonight. Um, well, I mean, it's preseason, so it's kind of difficult to uh, make any rash decisions. Well, what do you mean? I, I thought Hosang was going to score 80 points. I mean, Michael Bunting, as I tweeted, is a confirmed 30 goal scorer. Um, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, listen, like there's guys who, who did excel. Um, and Daniel did bring it up like Bunting and Hosang. Uh, I wasn't necessarily the biggest fan of Gusev. Uh, the second game, I think he played against Montreal uh, in terms of like defense, that third pairing really is up for grabs. Like it, it, it is whoever, whoever plays best. And if I want see Travis Dermott do that spinorama again, I might lose my mind, but like it was infuriating when I saw it on SDP. Like I didn't realize he did that. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there is a chance for Timothy Lilligren to make the opening night roster. It's just a matter of, are you going to take that spot? The issue is, is he's young, right? Like we know there's a pattern to what the Leafs need on their third pairing and it's a reliable guy mm-hmm. like this. This has been the conversation since episode one of the podcast. Like this isn't anything new. So if you can be that guy, you're pretty much set for 82 games. Alex has a Bogosian like bat signal outside of his window. Just saying that's what we want. That's <laughs> it's simple as that. It is man. Like, I, yeah, that's all I want. That's all I want. I just want a guy I can trust and maybe punch a face or two. It, it's not even because I have the jersey, right? Like, it, fine, whatever. He played a year here. I have the jersey. It's the fact that he he literally was the perfect fit for the role they needed him to play. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I think going to then the, the second game between Toronto and Montreal, 
Uh, it was enjoyable for me, at least, because it looked, <laughs> I guess because Montreal didn't travel the day of the game. Yeah. Uh, r- ridiculous, ridiculous stuff. Um, the second game, though, it it, it kind of felt like because as we know, a, the a, the preseason is just uh, you've got AHL guys, you've got guys who are probably going to the ECHL back to Europe. It's just a complete jumble. It's a bit of a mess, some would say. Uh, did you guys see much improvement from both teams? Well, obviously, Montreal was, was a pretty given, but like obviously, you, you start switching rosters. Like, you know, Marner was playing in uh, in game two, of course, and all that kind of stuff. Um, without Matthews there, and it's obviously a bit difficult to kind of say in the game that in the ultimate scheme of things, doesn't matter for those star players. What did you guys make of a game where Marner was the guy? To say, and there we did. We got a bit of a preview of him working the bumper, where I think he hit the post on it. it was like, oh, okay, okay, enough of that, please, enough of that. Uh, like for me, it, it, in terms of Marner, the expectations are high, and I think reasonably so, mm-hmm. um, especially when you make that much money and, and and the skill level you have to begin with. Like, don't like not even taking into account what happened last year. Just bare minimum, the expectations are high. And, and I think I'm interested to see what he's like on a more consistent basis in that bumper position, because I really feel that having Matthews on one side and Nylander on the other really changes the dynamic of the power play because they can both shoot the puck. Mm-hmm. Dan, what about you? What did you think of that second game? Um, yeah, I like the Marner um example the best right now that you guys have been using that it's low level but it's enough to kind of show the people that they still have faith in the fact that he can be one of the guys bitch marner mm-hmm. can be one of the guys you can rely on again yeah you're paying him the top dollar to still be like that but i think that in a way that can, they can do that right now where they divide the talent where they show okay who's he going to play with what he can do what are the new roles he's going to have like on the power play? I think that that was an excellent thing. Um, in terms of like their defense, I, I think, I don't know why I kept thinking of Philip Krull every time we were begin, we we're about to begin the show. I think yeah, he, he did pretty well. I know he's not going to make the team, but that was just kind of one guy where I'm like, okay, stood out a bit. We'll see. Yeah. What about Mikheyev, guys? Because I saw how he had that partial breakaway. I saw Allen stop and I just kind of laughed. I'm like, <sighs> He he's sticking true to his identity here, I guess. Yeah, it's it, it's rough to to watch that, and and like I think I said it when the trade request rumor came out was that he it, it was that one particular skill is when you're in front of the net. If you're, you're like I'm not expecting Mikheyev to be in a in the Matthews position on that. <laughs> and just rip it into the net. Like I'm, I have my expectations quite low for that. Like mm-hmm. if he's in front of the net and, and it's a wide open opportunity, I, I expect kind of expect those to go in. And I, and I think uh, I, I hate doing this, but I'm just going to keep quoting them. Dangle made a good point last night in saying the confidence boost of just getting one in could be in like, it could be huge. Because that's what's been the thing since his wrist injury is that it's just been time after time after time after time where he does where the same thing happens and he doesn't it doesn't necessarily go his way. And and he used the example of Curtis Gabriel and I think it was uh, Nick Ritchie where those goals weren't necessarily nice goals per se. David Camp was the second. Sorry, David Camp. And it's like, man, like just can't catch a break. And, and I think if we, he can just put one in a, in a game, put a goal in, I think that does change a lot. It's I, I, when I hear talk, people talk about Ilya McKay, I've you know the speed and like there, the term has been used too fast. Uh, his hands don't match up to the speed of his feet. Right. And I just kind of thought of Michael Grabner and Grabner has had these weird years where it's like he'll pot 30 goals and there's like seven. What's really fun is Mikheyev, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he just pops one year and it's like just for a single season and somehow he ends up getting overpaid for it. Probably not by the least because they don't tend to do that with their, I was about to say, they don't do that with their forwards and then people are going to yell about Austin, uh, yell about Ma- Marner, but you know what I mean? Like, they're very careful with their death guys, but this is, it's always how I think about Mikheyev. It's like, 
you are just a single bubble. And you talk about it more with goal scorers, but again, it's that you get hot in this league and you can just keep going from it. It's insane. But I mean, hey, it was fun. It was like a late career modern Havlat. The skating is still there. It's just the Mm -hmm. goal scoring. The, The finish is just not there. But it'll get flipped at the deadline for a late round pick because some team thinks he can fit it and add some scoring on the third line. <laughs> Classic. Love to see it. Um, it's like Thomas Vanek in his later years, except yeah, he yeah. Had, still Billy had Leno. some finish. But. Louis well, Erickson had a big contract. Hmm? Louis Erickson this season. Oh, yeah. I can't wait to see whoever picks him up at the deadline. Can you imagine the Bruins do it? They're like, we need some depth scoring. <laughs> Can you Let's imagine he goes, he goes back to like... It just it was the Vancouver effect. He just goes back to actually being consistent. Goes back to Dallas again. They put him with Sagan and he pops twenty. I wouldn't yep. be surprised. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I mean, it's just it's funny that it was the moment he got there, it was just fell off a cliff. It's not a coincidence. Like, like it's the Jeff Skinner thing. In Buffalo, he he had that one super hot year where he scored for it. They overpaid him and he turned into a like a thing of tomato paste or something. It's a non-factor. I don't know, man. No it's just a bag of feathers. I, I don't know. It's, oh, cool. it's, it's a non-factor. These comparisons are just off the <laughs> charts. I haven't been this crazy with my with my analogies in a couple of years. Oh, yeah. A stack of cash with a $100 bill around it, but they're all dollar bills inside of it. <laughs> you remember that really weird joke from Spider-Man 2? When it's like, so whoever had a roll of $20 bills around the elastic band we found the elastic band like dr octopus makes that joke like before he goes crazy and evil it's like when he first demonstrates like the octo legs and it's like what what's this joke here that's my sense of humor is i find it funny but no one else really does and i get the pity laughs but you know we take okay. those we take those all day um kind of like how we take the warm receptions that jonathan drew has been getting like every time he's done anything uh this preseason you know that meme where it's like the guy walking with his girlfriend, but he's looking at this girl who walks past? So yeah. I saw this really funny meme, and it was like the girl the guy was with was the Dino Tatar Gallagher line, and then the one they were checking out was Druid Anderson and Dvorak. Because <laughs> uh, they, I mean, they had a hell of a game uh, against the Leafs in, in the game they played, and I think Dvorak had three points, Druid, I think, um, had a pair, Anderson had some goals in that. Uh, what do you guys make of uh, of uh, especially Jonathan Druin's performance, and how about that movement on the power play, Daniel? We haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, I like I like that's what I liked about it. That again, like they there were a lot of changes going on with the Habs roster, but with Jonathan Druin coming back and just fitting in with Christian Dvorak, it just for me and having Josh Anderson there as like that big body that guy that could skate and like crash the net for you. It's just it's I call it the consistency line that it's a it's the one that's going to get get it going for you. The one that you can really rely on. The one that I think Montreal was really kind of hoping for, especially when you see that their forward depth did take a little bit of a hit this offseason. And I'm hopeful for it. I like what we talked about with Druin before is that he's at a point now where I think that if he could keep it going, he could have a breakout year. I like, I truly believe that he could have that breakout year. Like I'm, I'm aiming for like, 50 points 50 points or more i think that's fair like if he hits like 60 pots 20 goals 25 i'm like there we go there's jonathan there he is did you guys think joss anderson looked a little slimmer or was that just me because obviously he he i'm not saying he's a because you know he's just a a massive human being right he's in great shape and we know how fast he can skate i know he was four checking and i looked at him and i thought you you look slimmer josh i don't know that was just me but is he friends with nathan mckinnon no, well, but what's so what's funny is naturally remember who was Nathan McKinnon's like best friend and teammate in Halifax, Jonathan That's Druin, right. and remember when Joss Anderson gave that quote about Druin, he talked about how like Druin was training nonstop, and then all of a sudden, like he'd have the trainer come to his place. So maybe Anderson got into the training regime with Jonathan. I mean, you know, Jonathan Druin's in pretty good shape too. So I mean, and maybe him and Nathan McKinnon are doing dietary things over the summer. Most, I'd say most hockey players are quite in shape. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Except Phil. No. Except Phil. Yeah, but he can do it. Doesn't matter. He can it's still skate. He's, yeah. He was fast back in the day. 
Remember when he beat Sagan and fastest skater at the All Star game? Yes, I do because they that weekend I think they just made the joke out of that trade. They really did. Because yeah, they, they they traded him at the the selection draft. Yeah, right? they did. Yeah. yeah. And then they were like, let's put them up against each other in the skate. And Phil won. Yeah. No one expected that, did they? No, the Rottweilers. Rottweiler did not expect it. No, he's not a fan of Phil Kessel for some reason. I don't know. He didn't like the trade. I, I guess not. Didn't know. He didn't know he was aware of it. <laughs> he just hears us yell about hockey. And he's like, what are you doing? Why are you, you're mad at me when I make loud noises. What about you? I say Diesel. I'm sorry. You just don't get it. Have you ever called your dog Kevin Nash? When we first got him, no. yeah, I did okay. look at him and like, hey there, Kevin. And my mom's like, we, we got him when I was like 11 or 12. And so I thought it was the funniest thing. My mom just said, don't, don't call him so, that. So was that around the time that he came back and there was that whole storyline between him and CM Punk? I think that was a little. I, so later. when I started watching wrestling again for that period, yeah. um, I came after Nash attacked Punk. I just knew oh. that Diesel was Kevin Nash, and so I thought, "Hey there." <laughs> okay. And it was like, "No, don't mix the dog up." <laughs> you just- you missed a great few weeks uh, as he attacked CM Punk. That was some great great storyline. Now he's wrestling again. Yeah, it's unfortunate that WWE just can't write a storyline. They're just unfortunate, period. WWE. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. We'll help them. We'll help them with the right with the scripting. We'll, we'll call, make some calls. Yeah, I just give Nakamura the title. I stopped watching years oh, yeah. ago because they just I... did my boy Nakamura so dirty. Oh. Anyway, um, hockey. Anything else you want the guys want to sort of touch on when it comes to uh, the preseason so far in regards to our uh, these two Canadian teams, these historic rivals? I, I do not think so. Okay. <laughs> Are we going I to think shift to the uh, Battle of Ontario. We can. Well, I mean, if you think about it, this mo- who? Why are the motorcycle gangs out at at, at six thirty on a on a Wednesday? What's going on? There's a party. But I mean, yeah, preseason. It's the Sens. What are you expecting out of that game? I guess beside the Sens, a lot of young players in the Leafs. They're good. One thing. Yeah, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. No, the one thing I just really want to focus on because they're going to be playing them. I think in their bottom pairing is Lassie mm-hmm. Thompson and Eric Brandstrom, and I think that what I was reading today, I think from PSN, was they're going to look at seeing like one of them makes the team, and I think if Thompson makes it, that's great. But if Eric Brandstrom doesn't make it, then I'm like, yeah, no, that that prospect status he kind of had there. I'm like, okay, it's 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 a lot. It's like it's the same as the Timothy Little Lilligren. I'm example just right about now that, that yeah. it's like just wait for this guy to break out and like just wait for it and for a team like Ottawa where you know they're not exactly knowing they're gonna compete right now but they want to see the reps they could get for these young guys um it's just kind of questionable for me I know I'm not I'm not putting him in the Logan Brown example right now who was <laughs> traded but it's just for a guy that you got and you said like this was a prospect we were le- really looking at and we traded um mark stone for him like it's it's a bit iffy for me right now he yeah. was like the centerpiece of that deal yeah like he was at the time they they traded for Eric branch him he was the best prospect not in the nhl is what i remember saying. people saying that yeah and then the I same remember things they said about Shabbat. Sorry, God. Yeah, no. Yes, they did say this. Yeah, you're right. And, and it's like then I remember it was last year or two years ago, and there was just this refusal to play upon his offhand, even though he said, I prefer to play on my offhand. It, it was weird. It's just a, a weird thing for Thomas Shabbat. My um, apologies for, for Eric Randstrom. I didn't add another defenseman according to the TSN article. The other defenseman fighting for that spot is. I am going to say his name wrong, but Jonathan Aspero. We're big fans. Huge. Yes. He's uh, <laughs> from Quebec, signed well by the Sens in 2020. It's 22. Yep. Uh, played for Belleville the last two seasons in the we'll AHL. Yeah. That's nice. So there can only be one <laughs> on the back end. And just hope it's Brandstrom for development's sake. That's such a mess. They really, that's that's something you got to hit on. Some of those young defensemen nowadays, you're like, I don't know, man. I don't know. Well, guys, uh, moving on. 
there have just been, I don't know what happened here, but training camp started and everyone got hurt. <laughs> Everyone. We know Mike Hoffman's going to be out for a few weeks. Uh, Devin Taves out of Colorado will miss the start of the season from I believe, his soldier surgery. Uh, Phil Kessel has a foot injury that may keep him out for some time. Uh, Nick Baxter is week to week after rehabbing a hip injury. I think it's the same one he got surgery for a couple years ago. And Evgeny Malkin is set to be out for two months uh, after knee surgery, still recovering from that. Uh, shout out to Pittsburgh, who uh, aren't going to have either of uh, Malkin or Crosby at the start of the year. But they won't. It doesn't matter to them. Do we do an exercise? I would. I think I know where you're going with this, but sure. Let's it's do the, the same exercise. one that we did with Tampa Bay. Said, who's going to replace the third line? We all picked a name. I think I picked Jimmy Huntington just because of all the right. name. Can you pull up Cap Friendly, um, if you can, and go on sure. the Pittsburgh Penguins and scroll down to their non-roster forwards? Right. I'm still going to pick a roster forward, but it's just, I know they had a... Uh, That's the first line center. They had an interview, yeah, with uh, Jeff Carter, and apparently like he's going to go back to center, oh, and then yeah. he's going to play like a bunch of minutes for them. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. There's just all these names. I'm like, well, Philip Hollander. Oh my gosh, I forgot he's on a PTO. Who? Brian Boyle. Oh, for the yes. Penguins. Yes, what? yes, yes, yes. I yeah. Remember. Excuse me. Yeah. When did yeah. that happen? A few weeks ago. Oh, they got back Dominic Simon as well. He was on the uh, Flames last year. Didn't know uh, he left. So I I'm gonna pick Justin Almeida, 22 years old. Okay. That is my guy to have a breakout season, just like Teddy Bluger. This guy has been a journeyman for a couple of teams. I'm going to go Michael Chaput, former Canuck. I think he had a cup of tea with the Habs. Michael Chaput, let's go. All right, I'm going to pick Casper Bjorkquist, who, fun fact, was the second-round pick that the Leafs technically got for Dan Winnick, but it was conditional, and then they traded it back in the Kessel trade. <laughs> really? Yeah. Not bad. A lot of assets. The Penguins. Just a fascinating team. Just, uh, what are they going to be in three, four years? I wonder. Like, when does the. I was going to say Daniel? one. I was going to say one thing, but I'm like, oh wait, no, this doesn't fit your your regular scenarios. I'm like, I thought you were going to pick Samuel Poulon, but I'm assuming he should be traded after training camp. Naturally, he'll, he'll be traded for Phil Castle and he'll come back. Yeah. You see. Exactly. Yeah. Not Mark Andre Fleury this time. No, nah, you wish, <laughs> you wish, but you know, what's fascinating about Pittsburgh is they have just been so competitive for so long now. Like they they outlasted the Blackhawks into sort of like competitiveness. The Kings, obviously, the Kings rebuilt in that time. The Pens have been competitive. <laughs> it's hilarious to think of just how well and, and as much criticism as as we throw at the Penguins and many people do. Just what a a well ran organization. Yeah. I mean, they, they find ways to surround their star players and not necessarily put themselves in horrible situations like other teams had done in the past. Mm -hmm. um, and if they did put themselves in a bad situation, they were able to get themselves out. Bad contract. Ah, this guy played with Cross, but he will give him to you for a second. And that's how it works. Exactly. And they really hit with like the late picks. You know what I mean? Like even when they were super, super competitive, it's like okay, next guy, next guy up. Like Brian Russell's Gensel's out of nowhere too. Pots forty goals. Like what is this? I which wish every team was at this. Yeah, which allowed them to go out and trade for these guys, like a Jason Zucker. At, at, at one point, Phil Kessel. Yeah, at one point, yeah. literally, uh, we get Phil Kessel. Yeah. Wild team, wild team. You know, of course, never forget the who should be a Hall of Famer, Chris Kunitz. One of my favorite debates we've ever had on the show. Let us know in the comments of the YouTube version, which you should check out on the show. Also, when you leave a review, let us know who should who has a bet, better pedigree to be a Hall of Famer, Connor McDavid right now, or Chris Kunitz. It's Chris Kunitz. Oh, like we're changing the, the players. It's now. It's no longer John Tavares. <laughs> okay. I've made. I've made that point. Now it's it's time to move. On. <laughs> okay. How many Stanley Cups does come? None. How many gold medals does not? None. Wow. He has a gold medal. <laughs> Multiple cups. There it is.
Yeah. The people who are always like, oh my god, the championships, they're, they're above all when talking about, oh, it's garbage. Uh, it's garbage. Beside that, and that, that just turned into a pure Pittsburgh, pure, pure Pittsburgh. But um, yeah, Dude, everyone's which hurt. Which the best? Yeah, he's old and he's got to play center. Yeah. It's a shame. Carries that team. And do you know what's sickening? He'll pull it off perfectly. Exactly. Because Pittsburgh. Yeah. Pittsburgh, everything gets done well in Pittsburgh. Yep. Uh, no matter who's in charge. Mm hmm. Yo, God. Yeah, you think of all the flack that Jeremy Rutherford used to get. <laughs> and it was like, you know, you're a dar, you should be fired. And then he fires the head coach. And then Sullivan comes in and they win two cups. And you're like, cool. Okay. All right. You know, they had Michelle Terry as a coach at one point. I remember and, that. And it was just, ah, whatever. So we should probably move on, though. Pittsburgh. Um, that was going to be an injury segment, but you got it anyway. I'm okay. That, that's a preview right there. Praising the Penguins. Exactly. Something that is not is not. Is not. Oh. And you know. Oh, when... no. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, okay. I All thought right. it was me. Okay. It, that, that was me for a split second because my mic hates me. So, Evander Kane, um, I want everyone to know what we're about to talk about, very importantly, is all alleged. Uh, nothing to this date has been, like, nothing against Kane has been prosecuted or anything like that. Um, so, it's it's all alleged. So, first off, Evander Kane has not been participating at Sharks Camp, probably will not. Um, and this came after the NHL concluded their gambling investigation, Adam. Uh, they couldn't find any proof, so he's sort of been clear that that... Um, now, the same day the league released their statement, it came out they were investigating him for something else. And this is, has to do with um, family court stuff that's going on with him and his, I don't, I think a strange wife, wife is the proper term. I don't know if they're divorced yet. Anna Kane, of course. Um, quote, and if, listen, if you're not, trigger warning, I think is what you're supposed to say here. Um, skip ahead like 30 seconds if you want. Um, Kane, quote, made additional allegations, and this means Andy Kane, um, alleging this week of sexual and physical abuse uh, in a restraining order application filed in Santa Clara County Family Court. That's from a, a Sportsnet article, by the way. Um, that is now an investigation. From that, Kane has taken a step back now from the Sharks. Um, we won't go into all the details of that proceeding here, um, because A, it is not easy to talk about, and Again, we have spent so much time on the Vander Kane, uh, and I think all I will say before I ask you guys is like, uh, at at some point, not just the Sharks, but the league need to step in here, and something needs to because this is like everything, the noise around a Vander Kane, um, and this is like this back to back to back investigations about his his, his conduct or alleged conduct, I should say. Um, and I'd see the, and then there was the third one I should mention. I almost forgot about this. He's now being investigated for a possible breach of COVID protocol. Uh, if you guys want to say something, I just um, I, I don't know how much more we can say on the Vander Kane. I I don't. Um, for me at least, there's not a whole whole lot to say. It's just getting frustrating at this point. Uh, from my standpoint that it's every other week or every time one thing goes away, there's another thing that pops up. So there's a recurring theme here that should be um, noticeable for NHL teams. And I mean, I thought some of them, I thought articles that were written, I'm thinking it was Kevin Kurz of the athletic made that quite clear that there's plenty of noise around Evander Kane and obviously the Thomas Hurdle stuff too. So uh, there's not a whole lot to comment on other than like, like let's get this figured out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's a mess. Like it is a huge mess. And a lot of the allegations that are going on against him and a lot of things are being brought forward for me. I just kind of felt that, they're all, as, as they are allegations and as they say that the case continues, you want to see more details of what already happened and what they're already investigating. But it just is an even bigger mess because like, oh, while these things are pending, even more stuff keeps being brought up to a point that I really feel that there is going to be a buyout for cause 
at this point or a termination of contract. Um, I brought up the Mike Richards example before. I know that was with cause and they found credible evidence for that. But I think for the Kane one, it's reaching a point where the NHL might grant the Sharks that right to terminate Evander Kane's contract. Yeah. Um, last thing, I said this. Um, I've said this before on, on Evander Kane. Um, also, you hope that this gets sorted out for the sake of the children involved. Um, he has a daughter. I don't know if the son. I think his son has been born or second child. For sorry, I don't know. That, I don't remember if there was a thing on if it's a son or daughter. But uh, there are two very young children here, and uh, you hope everything is settled for their sake. Um, and, and again, um, I just, no, I'm not, not going to say anything else. Not going to say anything else. Um, it is a sharp turn from here, but it is, actually, if I'm just going to be honest here, uh, the next few things we're going to talk about, there's something about the Blackhawks and, um, some other stuff, AKA, um, the whole Semerek stuff and the stuff going on in the Ukrainian hockey league. Uh, so it, it's the rest of the show is a little difficult. After that, we are going to talk about Zabanichad, some COVID stuff and all that. Um, Sammy Vatnin, that will be kind of fun to joke about. Um, some goalie stuff, but it's uh, it's rough. So first, we'll, we'll get the stuff that's sort of the news of the day out the way first. So last week in the Ukrainian Hockey League, the UHL, uh, Andre Danishkin, Sorry if I say any of the following names wrong, by the way. I'm not very well fluent in Ukrainian or any of the names like that. Uh, he's a forward for H.C. Kremenchuk. Uh, he made a gesture of, of peeling and eating a banana towards Jalen Semerek, who is a, a black hockey player. Uh, he's a defenseman for H.C. Donbass Dontisk. Uh, Semerek has since taken away from the game, a step away from the game, say that I will not play another game in the Ukrainian Hockey League until Andre Denishkin is suspended and removed from the league. Now, uh, as of recording, last time I checked, I don't think that Semrek has actually said anything in to do with the suspension. And AK, the suspension is, it's three plus ten games. Now, originally, people believed that he could pay a fine that was around, if you put into US dollars, eighteen to two thousand dollars uh gordon miller then had a report today saying that is not the case and that sort of information was being mishandled even though the guy who said that that was the case was i think the gm of the uhl um and just for any like to give you a sense of, of again a, a blatant racist act um 13 games i will point out um the UHL season is normally 40 games. I, I don't know if it's shortened this year, but any other season I've looked up of theirs is 40. So he is basically getting, rounding a little bit here, only 25% of their games. Sorry, yeah, barely even that uh, for his actions. Um, I don't think I need to ask you guys how you felt about the event because it's, it's clearly disgusting is one more way of saying it. But your reaction rather, and I'll start with you here, Daniel, to the suspension being 3 plus 10, 13 games for what he did. Yeah, I don't know. It was, for what, the reaction, I think the reaction to what actually happened during that game to what the actual punishment was did not, did not fit. And I think I, he could say it best, but Akeem Alou said it best in his tweet where he said, end quote, uh, this is a complete embarrassment. How are we as uh, people of color ever supposed to trust the system when at every turn it fails to protect us on and off the ice, like end quote. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is a frustrating thing to see because I remember the player who is being suspended here. He had that Instagram post where he said this alleged action. And then he, in a way he said he didn't really say a, sincere sorry about it he just kind of said that oh i'm sorry if i offended somebody and yeah. all this stuff but i know that was since deleted but it was just i don't know it just kind of felt like a damage control type of act other than actually owning up to what you did and what you know you did because there was to, to what that was there was obvious thinking there you know it wasn't a spur of the moment kind of thing that type of like racist act the the apology fit the format of the apologies or the explanations we've seen in the last 18 months montreal chicago um 
I'm, I know I'm missing somebody. Probably Arizona, the Mitchell Arizona, Miller Arizona, Mitchell, Mitchell Miller. Um, like, it, 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 that, to me, it fit that, that boat. Um, if, sorry, go ahead if you guys have anything else. No, I was just, I was, one thing of the apology I'd say, it was, yeah, it was uh, rather a, what he was told to say, rather than probably something sincere. Again, the apology was, uh, it was misunderstood. No, it was, no, it wasn't. Come on now, he, a banana. That, like, I think apology. that's pretty obvious what you were doing, man. And and again, like just it's it's, and especially going to Mitchell Miller and Logan Mayu, especially looking at that is uh, uh the apology to the person that uh, you hurt, and um, well, didn't happen in this either. A lot of the comments I was also seeing too is people who are dismissing it or like oh whatever it's an act and who cares about this league, but it is a like a universal like problem right now in hockey right like this same sim like a similar act happened to wayne simmons when, when he was on the flyers yes. during like a preseason game in london ontario so it is something that it is embedded in the, the sport that's like we really need to fix this there's an issue um and i mean i'd say there are viable solutions out there this isn't a recent thing that we've that people have noticed this is the thing that people have noticed for years and years and years and years probably going back before any of us were born so to say this is some recent that this is a recent issue in the sport um would be would be lying it it, it straight up be lying um and i i just think to say who cares like who cares about this league is just disingenuous like it's it's the it's the act that's the issue. I don't care. Like a crime is a crime. It doesn't matter if it was worth. If someone stole something worth twenty dollars, worth a hundred a uh, hundred thousand dollars, it's still a crime. I want to say that someone tweeted out today. By the way, okay, freaking ignore like just you know the whole integrity of the game. And and as a person, this guy clearly did not show. Apparently, and the IIHF are yet to give their verdict because I believe he is part of the Ukrainian national team or something along those lines. Naturally, we saw this with Kuznetsov. There was an internal, like, short-term suspension with a video with him that looked like to be some sort of white powder and the IIHF has suspended him on their separate way. Shut up, dogs. That's not even my dogs. Those are the outside dogs. Um, and the Caps gave him, like, a week or something, I think it was. So, um... That's a sort of added layer there. And you know, to talk about, like, remember Devontae Smith Pelly a couple years ago? Like, like I want to say it was the year the Caps won the Cup. Um, was like in the box, box, he was sitting down and someone was telling him to go play basketball. Um, so I, I'm pretty sure C P P K Subban got something like that um, when the Habs were in Boston once. Um, oh, yeah, that was and, a playoff game, right? Uh, I think it was, yeah. And then there was, um, there was famously... This is still a while ago, but it's not, again, the first time it's happened to PK. Um, when he was a kid, and, like, someone was going after him and his family. And it's a famous story of, like, Steven Stamkos and his family stepped in. It was told around once once Tampa won, won the cup in the bubble. But it's, 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 again, racism is not a new thing, and it's not going away. So, I mean... Uh, it's it's a it's too light of a punishment. It's just it's too light of a punishment, and hopefully the double IHF, who have a new president by the way, yeah, um, they they need to get this right too, and, and the and the the uh, Ukrainian league too. Mm. I, I, mm. It, it's it's like yeah, thirteen games. It's not even thirteen games. So it's thirteen games because he got a match penalty. Mm -hmm. So this actual suspension for this is ten games. The actual act that they suspended him for was for 10 games, which to me, like it's 13 games is low. 10 games is low. Like there it's ridiculous. I'm I, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, and it's not even that it's like, well, how are you going to deal with this in the future? Like you could say, Oh, you know, it's Eastern European called like it's a thing in Eastern Europe. I don't care though. Like you there, you can do it to make sure that within your game, I'm not asking you to, no one's asking anybody to change Europe, Eastern European cult, like the way things are in Eastern Europe. They're asking you to change it within the game. 
not to mention even looking at Europe. I know a lot of the times we're kind of like, ah, you know, it's a, like obviously hockey's big in Canada. They're working on it in the states, but the people forget sometimes that even if it's not a, a Ukrainian league, like the SHL and that are still massive European leagues. Yeah. Where, you know, those that is a significant portion of of player. Like, hey, Victor Hedman, ever heard of him? Pretty important, but Nikita Kucherov, Russian player, pretty important, kind of an MVP. So. I don't know what you're thinking about. I don't know. It's oh, yeah. also the the new I, double IHF president. What a way to come in, by the way, on your first week. This is this is your first thing you're dealing with. Uh, this is a way to really cement his legacy. I think this is a defining moment um, for him. Uh, Luke Tardif, who mm-hmm. is succeeding Rene Fassel. Like this is a this is quite big. So to it, whatever their actions are, it's on him and for the rest of his tenure as double IHF president. Mm-hmm. This was a proving ground, essentially. Like a huge case like this is like, okay, how are you going to deal with it? And they, I don't know. It just kind of, it's like they. I, I don't like. Why are they afraid? to give like i just want to know like why are they afraid to give like a punishment that you know fits the crime the uhl yeah or like essentially like wanting to kind of like okay that that's what was given and then whf's like okay we're just gonna leave it like that you know i i don't think any of us are super familiar with the with the uhl but it, you wonder is this them seeing that it's a fair punishment i don't know what their suspension history is even like um or if they've had similar incidents this before uh, maybe it's not them thinking like oh i'm gonna get this right oh we're gonna fail maybe they just thought oh this is fine this is this is a good this is good lads which if that is the case it's like okay get your head a bit of a shake here but um, I, I I would love to know their way of thinking it, Daniel. Is kind of I'll, I'll agree with you there. Um, yeah. so moving on. Um, okay, this is the last difficult thing we're going to talk about before we can go back to yelling about Chris Johnson going to TSN and that the fun stuff. Uh, this is an athletic article from Mark Lazarus and Scott Powers. So Scott Powers, by the way, remember we were talking about the the triple the triple threat athletic article from Lazarus Strang. We couldn't remember the third. Yes. I think it's it was Scott Powers. Okay. Okay. So just I'll, I'll read the first few paragraphs, not the full thing. Go read it, writers. It's great stuff anyway. Uh, Miami, I ho- Ohio, Miami, Ohio um, responded quote appropriately to Brad Aldrich allegations report. An independent investigation commissioned by Miami University in Ohio found that school officials responded, quote, appropriately to two credible allegations of sexual assault against former Blackhawks video coach Brad Aldrich while he was director of hockey ops at Miami from July to November of 2012. The first alleged uh, sexual assault occurred over Thanksgiving break in 2012 and involved a non-student who had worked summer hockey camps at Miami as an intern. Less than a week later, after being informed that the university was looking into the alleged victim's report and that he would be suspended effective November 27th, November 27th, sorry, Aldrich resigned. The second alleged sexual assault also took place during Aldrich's stint at Miami, but it wasn't reported until 2018. Miami hired Aldrich on the recommendation of Miami hockey coach Enrico Blasey. I'm going to read that part again because it's very important. Miami hired Aldrich on the recommendation of Miami hockey coach Enrico Blasey. Continuing, Blasey cited Aldrich's, quote, work experience and knowledge of ice hockey and video and technology for hiring him. Aldrich arrived at Miami after working at Notre Dame. Blasey was unaware why Aldrich left Notre Dame, but Blasey thought Aldrich may have wanted to return to coaching as his Notre Dame position wasn't directly affiliated with the team. This is the last part I'm going to read, and it's very, very important. The report from the law firm Barnes & Thornburg also stated that Aldrich did not provide any reference from former employees, which included the Blackhawks. With his resume when he applied for the job in June 2012, one of the two lawsuits targeting the Blackhawks over Aldrich's conduct alleges that the Blackhawks provided, quote, positive po- provided positive references to future employers for Brad Aldrich as a hockey coach, despite their knowledge of two sexual allegations made against Aldrich 
by Blackhawks players. Now, a reminder, one of the John Doe's, and again, as it says there, is a legend the Blackhawks gave a letter of recommendation. The Blackhawks have denied it as such, and this article could, again, I'm not a lawyer, I'm going to be very careful what I say here, but if this is the case, and that there is no letter, um, that is going to have an effect on the Blackhawks case. Not both of them, because John Doe 1 and John Doe 2 have different claims, but it's very important to keep that in mind. Um, and again, we want to continue to talk about the Chicago stuff and the Aldridge stuff because it's really important and it's stuff that still people aren't really talking about. So we wanted to continue to sort of bring that up. I don't know if you guys wanted to say anything or if we wanted to move on here, but go ahead. Uh, just from my standpoint, uh, what you said at the end there about people talking about it, I, I think it's, I think that's extremely important that it's not just the same group of people who are talking about it in Rick Westhead, Katie Strang, um, Scott Powers. And now I forgot the other, the third one, what Mark Lazarus, uh, sorry, yeah. Mark Lazarus. And then obviously the guys doing their due diligence in Chicago. Um, and, and I think from the support that we've seen from a lot of hockey guys, a lot of the hockey media with this UHL stuff, I'd also like to, to see that move towards Chicago as well. That doesn't mean you stop talking about one thing and going to the other. Twitter's a great place. You can send out more than one tweet at a time. Um, I, I just, I, I think that there's a lot of issues uh, that have come up and there's been a lack of talking about it. And I think mm -hmm. that is something I'd like to see more of. I think I we've brought that up before. Yeah. Uh, anything you'd like to add, Dan? Um, honestly, I don't want to add further analysis to what's going on because, again, the case continues and we don't have the insides the same as the athletic. But what Alex said is just to continue the conversation, especially for a platform like this, to keep on going with the updates, just presenting the case as it is and just, you know, just making sure that this gets the attention it deserves. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Again. Hard turn to make, but we we need to do so. Uh, the NHL have said that no unvaccinated players are going to be allowed to cross the border into Canada, uh, unlike the MLB and NBA, which is weird. The league taking a step forward. Uh, we also now know who is the unvaccinated New Jersey Devil, uh, and it's pretty important. They're starting goaltender Mackenzie Blackwood. Um, he's... He, Really, uh, his quotes just seem to be he's doing his due diligence and looking at all of the facts. Um, did you choose to I'm, believe him? I'm really enough? curious at what that means, though. You know, I saw a lot of NBA players say the same thing. Yeah, I want to know. Like it, it, it seems like it's like a re it's not recycled, but it's something where a no, lot no, of them, are, yeah, are bringing it up, and I'm like, well, I don't know. What does that mean? Like, I can't say I also did not look online as well. That would be a lie. Before I went, I also went online mm -hmm. um, and I made like the choice because there was overwhelming, whatever, overwhelming evidence. But I'm just I'd be curious to know what research they've done. It's really annoying when you look at CP24 and it's like there's news about Pfizer and like Moderna has this one in 5000 thing. And you're like, oh, gosh, I had a Moderna mix on my second shot. I have a mix oh. as well. I, as someone who got their science tests handed like this, like front page down, it's it's difficult to make my own decisions. Yeah, well, freaking listen. Uh, first of all, good on the NHL for sort of drawing the line there. Yeah, <laughs> like strange. It, if I Wait. told you a month ago that in terms of uh, PR that the NHL would actually look better than the NBA. Uh, in terms of vaccinations and, um, you know, playing games in two countries. I, I, I would tell you, you are lying to me. May I provide you to my theory as to why this has happened? Yes. I yes. think if we have one Canadian team like those other leagues, then it's the same thing. But think about Probably. it like this. Is they had to get the exemption for the trade deadline to even work last year. They don't like the Canadian division because they don't give a crap about any like Canadian ratings. So there was this was their best way and like the safest way of like having this season with the Canadian teams like 
at their greatest security. Not that Batman's like, oh, I gotta make sure that he hates the Canadian teams, obviously. Yeah, because um, yeah, most of them don't make money. Um, yeah, so uh, that's why I think they're doing it. I don't think the league were like, justice, because it's the NHL. No, yeah, they don't care. But uh, that, that's my my pet theory on it anyway. Uh, and Unless it's a Sun Belt team. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Arizona don't want to get vaccinated. Ah, uh, it's, okay. it's okay, guys. They don't have a home. That's okay. Uh, it's okay. Uh, you can just play on the road. I, I've saw people tweeting about the NHL that I like praising the NHL who don't generally praise the NHL. How is Will Baldwin? Yeah, <laughs> it's just Will. Okay. Uh, <laughs> there's a bit of news that came out. Eric Angles tweeted this out. Uh, so Julian Breezeball, who has been extended in Tampa Bay, there goes my theory. I'm that sorry, theory. Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so am I. Uh, been told Julian from Eric Angles on Twitter, uh, Sportsnet, great guy. Uh, quote: Been told Julian Breezeball's deal with Tampa Bay is five years at about three point five million dollars per. He's paid like a third line center. Love to see it. Um, obviously, a lot of attention now on Mark Bergevin as he enters his final year of his contract in Montreal, and I believe his future won't be left up in the air for much longer. Don't think negotiations would extend into the season. Obviously, Bergevin hasn't won consecutive cups, but nine years in and with an impressive resume in a very challenging market, he's got to be seeking something comparable. Would he be hard to replace um, and have plenty of... So he would be hard to replace... And would have plenty of opportunities elsewhere. We'll see where this goes. First off, so let, let's look at Bergeron's impressive resume. Like, okay, so conference <laughs> final and cup final appearance. Okay. Fair, fair. enough. Check me um, out. I think a two time GM of the year finalist. Yeah. Like, so, like, so let me, like, ignore it's Mark Bergeron. Let's say that you, like, there's this up and coming GM. And let's say he's been on his job for nine years. And in the nine years, we'll put it like this he, <laughs> is a two-time GM of the Year finalist, and in one of those years, he had the most first-place votes, but the voting is dumb, so he didn't win it. And Eastern Conference... And by the way, I don't like Bergevin. Like, the Mayu thing... Let's make that very clear. I want him con. So, a cup final appearance, a conference final appearance, the two finalist things... Okay. And has, has dealt with the stress of a Canadian market. And, and we won't I'm, go into the advanced metrics, because they're actually not great when you look at them, but... but- but that that conference final appearance and the finals appearance are on opposite ends of his tenure, right? Mm-hmm. Seven like that, years. I think should, is the I, difference. I think that's important too, and also his two five-year planned rebuilds. Yeah, that was yeah. annoying. That, I'll give him some should, credit with that with that plan, though. Like this is the credit I'll give him. Like I'm not gonna give him the full full credit, but he kept things afloat despite the losing streaks. He cleaned up his own mess. What are yeah, you talking that's, about? That's the issue is that he cleaned up his own mess. Like, look at the way we talk about, like, oh, we were, we just had this discussion. Like, Jim Benning cleaned up his own mess, but that, like, and, and that's a different, that's a different mess, though. He put it under the bed, didn't clean it. Like, yeah, like he put it, but we're still giving him crap despite trading four contracts that everyone hated and, um, and we're going to expire in a year. Like it, it, just because you cleaned up your own mess doesn't mean you get to, you don't get criticism. I don't know if he's irreplaceable too at this point. Like, like you could come into the Habs roster right now and you can like, hey, we're gonna go forward and try and be competitive, or you could like retool, rebuild. Like they're in a, the the roster. I think is in a healthy enough position where you could do anything. But like, Bergevin has not. It's been said that Bergevin is not shy about having good people around him, and there are like Martin Lapointe is there, again a younger guy, not as experienced yet, but you could bring him into a fold as the AGM like Lolongo, and like what's very important here is, I don't know if it's so much of a rule as it is the coaching thing. I'm gonna assume that it is that you gotta get someone who's French speaking, but uh, there are options. I just think at this point of, and let's separate the Mayu stuff, even though it was awful and like. The whole staff should be like real look in the mirror about it. At some point, you need a new. So I think he's like one of the longest lasting GMs in the league at this point. Good right now. Obviously, not to like the likes of David Poyle, who's been around since like Nashville came it's into a, yeah, the league. Yeah, they came into the league. <laughs> but at, at some point, like you've gotten your shot. The finals appearance is the best. You couldn't get it done. Maybe like they need a new look on things. So just there's uh, five GM one. 
there's sorry, there's six GMs who have longer tenures. So he's up there. Yeah. Who are they? I'd like you to guess. We'll play a game. So six GMs that have more term than him. So yeah. obviously there's Stand going Bowman. to be no, because really Bowman. Yeah. Twelve oh, years. Oh wow, it's been a while. Um, so Bowman Poyle. Yep. Yeah. Who's been around? Let's think of some GM. Um, Benning came in probably around like 2013, so not him. Um, Tr- how long has True Living been around? Uh, he's been s- for seven years. So no. Oh, right. It feels oh, a lot okay. longer than that. Dorian's yeah. new. Yeah. Dubis is new. Yeah. Lamorello's technically new to the Islanders. Breezeball's new. Um... I don't even know Washington's GM's name, so I'll say him. Nope. Really? How long has Buddy in Washington been? Uh, seven years. What's his uh, name? Brian McClellan. Brian McClellan. Uh, I knew it was something McClellan. Okay. Um, Pittsburgh have had like three different ones in the past oh. decade. Who are the others? So, okay. So there's Kevin yes. Sheffield Dayoff, who's 10 uh, years. Wow. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Recently extended Doug Armstrong. Oh wow! He's been there a while. If he finishes yeah. the contract, he will be there for seventeen years because I believe he has another year after this. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So okay. Uh, so Stan Bowman, you guys said Bob yeah. Murray, 12, oh. 12 years. <laughs> oh, he, oh yeah, he replaced Brian Burke. Twelve years, uh, and then last uh, is Doug Wilson, eighteen years. Wow. <laughs> I, I, the one I didn't expect, the 18 um, years for Doug yeah, Wilson. Yeah. So those are the guys in front of. Um, What's with GM staying this long named Doug? How about like Doug Wilson undid like 16 years of like example, like some of the best G- GMing in the league and then pissed it away? In like three then, years. Did you see that Carlson cut his hair, by the way? No. He did? Excuse me? He did. No, Derek Carlson cut his hair short. And I'm oh, not no, okay no. with it. No, 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 no. I'm not okay. He, like, no it doesn't way. look like he pulls it off because he's really hot. But I was, I was, um, a little piece of me has died today. And uh, Burns, Burns cut his hair, but he still has his that, beard. Yeah, that I but saw. But er- Eric Carlson cutting his hair short. If you find it, Alex, can you screen share and just show the people? Yeah, if I can find it. It's just really sad. Oh. I want to say they put it on Twitter on Instagram, and it's like fresh cuts. Right? Oh, okay. I only saw one, but. I think it was his draft picture. <laughs> That's the only time I've seen him with shorter hair. So I, I guess just to speak on that um, unreplaceable, because I thought that was an interesting line to put in there. In my mind, and I don't know if you guys would agree, but there's maybe two GMs in the league right now who I consider irreplaceable. Um, and that is Lou and Steve Eiserman. I don't know if I'm being rough, but to me, those two guys are un, like irreplaceable. Uh, Joe Sackick is getting up there, and so is Julian Breesbois. But those two guys right now for me, I would not replace. Yeah, I can that. see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to try and find this picture of Eric Carlson because it's bothering me now. Oh, oh yeah, I found I'm it. Missing. I found oh. it. Let me oh. get it on my computer. One second. If you want to see it, find it on the shark social media as yeah. well as check out the visual version of the show on YouTube. That's incredible. This is really sad. This is really sad. Um, Daniel, how are you? While we're we're getting this picture up, how's life? I'm good. You know, it is good. The only one thing I I uh, I didn't agree with today, and I think it's just the nature of the times. Yeah, is how cold it gets now in the evenings. <laughs> I like it. Really, really uh, like it helps for sleeping, but also kind of like keeps making me remember that summer's over. So uh, Alex is now showing. There's Eric Carlson with short oh, hair. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, there I, we go. It's just I'm just not used to it. I'm not. I don't a fan. think that's. I don't think that's gonna heal your ankles, but no, oh, no, my. it's not. <laughs> I w- I just want him to win. And I just want him to be Eric Carlson again. I can't wait. He'll put up sixty points this year, but be like minus seventy six, and it's gonna be hilarious. Just okay. you know what the, you remember when Brent Burns was having a lot of turnovers, and then they put him on the, like Don't the Burns. right like on the forward line again. Maybe <laughs> that's what he needs. Just keep flip flopping. Okay. Um, 
quickly now. Um, Shelter him on the third line. I don't know about that. I think <laughs> I'm a power play specialist. So the Rangers, um, forward, Mika Zibanechad, uh is a UFA this summer. So is Thomas Hurdle, by the way. So is Nazem Kadri. So I think everyone's going to be sort of looking at each other like, what are you signing? What are you signing? What are you, what are you signing for? Kadri, take a million dollars off because you're going to get suspended in the playoffs and lose the series for your team. Anyway, t- defensive move. You blindsided him, Nas. <laughs> so what are you doing? Anyway, um, so uh, Zabana Chad has expressed that he wants to stay in New York. Who wouldn't? It's New York City. Uh, and Larry Brooks has reported that uh, both the Rangers and uh, Mika share the objective of getting a deal done. So I was looking at some of his stats. Um, he was on pace for 35 goals this season or the past season if it had been 82. Uh, he had 41 goals in 1920. He had 30 in 1819. Since so basically being a Ranger, he's turned into this like reliable, really good top six centerman, top line centerman. I should be fair, who can get you 30 goals and 70 points. And again, last season he was on pace in the normal season to be around 70 points. A scoring centerman on a team who really, really needs it. And I'm thinking he has to get at least eight, right? At this point, yeah, he can score. Around Sean Couturier is probably going to be a decent comparable contract wise. That's what I was thinking at least. I think yeah, he's going to get a comparable like that. Also because of the Ranger center depth. Yeah. That they don't him. really have. Yeah. So, I mean, yes, yeah, Strom, Ryan Strom. That's it. Um, unless like experiment one of their many wingers down the middle. <laughs> I've, I don't. I don't know, man. I've. I've I've seen a lot of that over my time as a Habs fan. Just go I've, get a natural son. You know what I remember? I remember. Uh, okay, here are other examples, but we're gonna get back to Zibanejad. Is of forwards or wingers at least who tried to play center because their team needed it. Bobby Ryan was tried to put be as, as a second line center on the Ducks. Um, who else? Patrick Kane. He actually, when the Blackhawks were bad, not like super bad, but before they. They had like that weird lull in 2012. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was uh, tested out as the second line center. If you go back to NHL 12, he's listed as a center. Oh. Gross. I don't like that. Yeah. Uh, but Mika, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what they do. The one thing, uh, actually the reason I sent you guys the article, was in the article he's, he's like, you know, I'm going to let my agent handle it. And... I, it's just it's it's just a repetitive thing I keep hearing. I'm like, okay, I, yeah, you're uh, you're that's their technically their job, but you have to be involved. Like this isn't this isn't the same thing. Like I think there's the Pedersen and Hughes thing too. They were talking about like, oh, you know, you just got to tell your agent to get it done. Well, I get you have a year to go, but I believe you should be involved in this process. If you don't want to negotiate, don't negotiate. But don't throw it out in the public and say, well, I'm going to let my agent deal with it. It's just like, oh, hey there. Um, Add some personality. No, I'm just going to wait till it's reported I turned down a seven-year contract worth $77 million. And then O-Dog rips me on uh, overdrive. And then I'm going to say, hey there. The day after Gord Stelic's son tells me that I should resign too. I don't, I don't know why I'm talking about Mitch Martin, but you, you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, that's kind of what popped in my head. I was just trying to think of another example too. Like just you're putting the blame on someone else, but you could easily fix this solution. You're telling me that you don't know the contracts that the team is offering you. It's not dire situations right yet. Right. But but yeah, it's, I mean, he's going to get paid, but you know, it's, I wouldn't mind someone signing him out of New York. So then Mike just takes a, takes a hike. I'm going to take a hot take here. Let's hear it. In the offseason, it's going to be um, all those centers that Adam listed. It's going to be like a roulette. Everyone's just going to rotate. Like One person signed with one team, so they signed the other guy that left that team to replace the guy that left. So who are the three guys you said? You said Zabinijad, Kadri, and... Thomas Hurdle. Hurdle. Thomas Tomas Hurdle. Tomas. 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 So Tomas Hurdle. Check Alex. Come on. It's Tomas. 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 Sorry. Thomas Hurdle is going to go to the Rangers. Yes. Um, because the manager is going to 11 by 7 from the Sharks. Because that's what they keep yeah. doing that. And then, and then Kadri's just going to stay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <I> don't know. <laughs> or, 
<laughs> I just, I, I, yeah. Honestly, but though I can see the Rangers going after Kadri if James Dolan is still involved with this team. Like they did just trade a third round pick for Ryan Reeves and then extend him. Like let's not forget that. Dolan they saw Kadri cross. Man, you throw Goudreau in line with Kadri and Ryan Reeves, and it's just it's a suspension the moment the suspension play. line. Exactly. I mean, hey, Kadri can probably get away with more because everyone's gonna be looking at Ryan Reeves punching someone. Exactly. Guys, I'm really sad. Why? Sammy Vatnin has signed in. The, <laughs> he signed in Switzerland for the year. With one year deal with Genevieve Servet. That's right. And not you can't Zurich? tell me otherwise. Um, mm. Not Zurich. No, Genevieve Servet. We'll see yeah. you next year, Sammy. I just thought that we should close the book on the Sammy Vatnin. Ch- no, there is a silver lining here. He'll rebuild himself and come back and then come Two things. Go. He's going to rebuild himself in Switzerland. Yep. He's going to learn French. Then he's going to go to Montreal. They speak French in Switzerland, don't they? Yeah, it's like yeah. French, Italian, and German they speak there. That's hilarious. Yeah. So but Alex could go there. And then he'll be the GM. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I can't it- wait to hear it. He'll do like a mid-season thing where he's like, I... We'll do a watch. Yeah, like we're the doing Sammy RFA. Watch. Like we're doing RFA watch. We'll do Sammy Vatten and watch. Yeah. Uh, speaking of RFA, speaking of RFA updates, there on are none. Moving on. <laughs> like, there's there's nothing. Um, that's CJ's music. Chris Johnston has had a hell of a week or a hell of a few weeks. Obviously, now he works at Toronto Star, writing there. Has his own show on the Steve Dangle podcast or Steve Dangle podcast network. Is it on Spotify? Oh, Jesse was so upset on the podcast. <laughs> Stop it. I got the pain. I felt the pain a little bit. When Steve, you know, when, when Jesse, Nick, but you're feeling the Nick, but dad anyway. Um, and, and then he just, all of a sudden, Darren Drager's like, we got, we got a scoop here, boys. And Chris Johnson has signed with TSN as an insider. So he'll probably be there for trade center. He's there for that's hockey. He'll be there for insider trading, which he's already been on. See what's what I I think the reason this is such a big loss for Sportsnet, beside that it's an insider, even if they have Elliot Friedman, is that Chris Johnson was like the Leafs reporter. I would yeah. say like, him and yeah, there's yeah. A, Fox jukebox. Yeah, and and look, and now and CJ, but CJ has a beard, and he does marathons. Exactly. I don't know if Luke Fox jukebox does, but. <laughs> But listen, now they've got one of them. It's big, man. Him and Mark Masters trying to get each other at the scrum. Mark Masters is out of a job now. It's a real oh, shame. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy for me that, I don't know, like for so long, even when we talked about it at school, just what Sportnet, Sportsnet has in terms of that monopoly of the NHL and just what they've been able to do. And then when we think of Chris Johnson or we think of like an Elliot Friedman, it's just, it's like that stack line of insiders that yeah, they've been they able to have the salary cap and they have to fire half of them. Yeah. They're basically, they were like the Colorado avalanche before the uh, salary cap. I just out oh, Forsberg's there in the corner. Yeah. Oh you, God. You... It's CJ throws the segments. Allen. Oh, and to Ron McClay, David M and Steve Dago gets two minutes of ice time. <laughs> what a shame. What a shame. And they just redid their entire radio broadcast. So that's, <laughs> Talk about Very how it's like one year Bob McCowan's fired, two years later he's back. Kiprios is gone, two years later he's back in the fold. What's going on? No comment. Anyway. No comment. I don't know. I'm, I'm no just. Comment. I'm, no I, yeah, comment. I'm, I'm just no thinking comment. about this. <laughs> no comment. No comment. We want to work there. Remember, no comment. <laughs> remember how the league were like, "Hey, Seattle, and Montreal, you can't do any shenanigans with Carey Price's contract." But Kucherov can sit on his ass for twelve months while he's recovering from hip surgery, and Tampa can be eighteen million dollars over the salary cap. Oh. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter at all. Okay. Uh, this is from Ebley Kaplan. We have breaking NHL. news. NHL. No, no. Oh. It's significant dates. Oh. The okay. NHL season ahead, October 12th will be the season opener. The 5th will be the All-Star game. 
The 5th to the 22nd is the Olympic break. Hopefully she puts in brackets. God bless her. Uh, the 21st of March is the trade deadline. May 2nd is where the playoffs begin. So like a few weeks later than normally is. June 30th is the last possible day of the cup final. July 7th and 8th is the draft. July 13th is free agency. So 12 days after normal there, guys. Can I ask a question? Is it going to be you doubting the Olympics happening again? No. Okay, then go ahead. Because- Why on earth are we starting the season on a Tuesday? Labor Day rule. <laughs> if the students they, get it, then they get it. I don't know. When they released the cup final schedule, it was like, hey there, there's no Saturday games. That's how I feel about the season starting on a Tuesday. Like either started on a Wednesday or started on a Saturday. Like those are your two, those are your two days, right? In terms of because Sportsnet in Canada has the, even in the U S like Wednesday night is rivalry night on NBC. I don't know what ESPN's plans are, but start it on a day. That's not Tuesday. Like to me, if you do it on a Saturday, even for ESPN, like Saturday, everyone's home or everyone's out drinking. So like, just do it on a Saturday and it'll just be so much better instead of a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And, and it's like Pittsburgh and Seattle are playing. What? I don't know, man. I haven't looked at that first Saturday to see maybe what it's looking like, but we'll see. I know Um, the Leafs are playing Ottawa. Lame. Okay, that's not totally mine. I think that's Montreal's home opener. Could be wrong. Against the Rangers. Yeah. 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 Mike sucks. Okay, well, (laughs) next time you see us, we're probably going to be reviewing All or Nothing, to be honest with you. What's that? Oh, I don't want to watch it, but I know I have to. We're doing a whole thing. I know. No, no. But like, I want to watch it with you guys. I'm just, it's just like, I don't want to have to relive that moment again. Uh, I I know Mike won't listen this far into the show, but the no. moment Suzuki and Caulfield have that game five goal, I'm going to scream a la boo as loud as I can. No, 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 no. Don't scream that. You know what I you am. have to scream, but you know what you have to scream. Care Bear. Baby Care Bear, whatever And it then was. he throws me on his <laughs> I can't wait. Oh. Okay. Well, that's the end of the show. Excuse my lighting. You got really awful. dark really quickly in your uh Yeah, well because I can't I don't have my light on because oh, yes. it's kind of garbo because it's a it's a warm light and then I have Don't talk about Miguel Garbowski like that. Garbo. Um okay. Well let me just that's okay. Did you do it? <laughs> it's like a flashlight and interrogation. Did you Where's the it? money? Where's the cocaine? Where's the money? Wait, did you mention? Cause what happens if someone doesn't listen to the audio? They don't know what you're holding. A ring light. A ring light, okay. My, my patented ring Stay light. Stay tuned for my, my setup for my ring light. Really? Yes. Yeah, I love you looked episode. away from the camera. Why are you lying to the listeners? No, it, it's going to be done. It's still in the Amazon ba- box, though. Oh! Al- Daniel, you've, you've been telling tales for years now about like Lego Batmobile, watching this, watching that. I'm Ring I light. feel betrayed. I feel yeah. betrayed. I feel like- you just have to believe in the progress. Mika Zibanejad did not become a star until like 24. That's true. Yeah, when the when the the Sens gave him up for Derek Brazard. Yeah, but that was normal at the time. Now we just have this expectation they get drafted and they're supposed to be superstars. Right. Now they still have the odd ones where yeah the odd ones not Michael every Delco. not every guy comes out of the draft and is just a superstar. Um, hmm. I'm still examples. waiting on Heisher to really take his strides. Capo Caco is like a fourth liner still. <laughs> Nolan Patrick can't stay healthy, unfortunately. I'm still waiting for Montreal's 2014 first rounder to work out. Who's that? Nikita Sherbach? I don't even know, but oh. it might be Nikita Sherbach. He's going to come back. I think he's in Dallas' organization still. Who cares? That surprised me. I'm like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. We found that out last a few episodes the ago. The starts. Okay. Um, that's everything. So, you know, um, outro time. I'm Adam. Alex is here. Yep. Say hello, Alex. Yes. Daniel is here. Hello. 
Thanks for listening. Uh, check out the show on all its social medias, especially TikTok and Facebook. Check out our own social medias, our own individual stuff. Alex's stuff, it's uh, his blog. Daniel's up at CGRU, as well as his own eye opener stuff. My YouTube channel, Sammy Nuku Video! Um, that was pretty loud into the mic, but I don't care because how many of you are still listening this far into the show? Who knows? If you are, we love you especially. And, um, beside that, we will see you probably Sunday when we talk about All or Nothing and where we cry that the preseason is still going on and Jack Eichel has still not been traded and the UFA, RFAs, I should say, are still not signed. Goodbye and good night.